Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, I changed the background here a little bit to kind of freshen things up. Um, I don't know, maybe give it a new look. I wanted to do this video this morning um, on the readings from today at Mass, specifically the second reading. And the reason that I want to do that is because Scripture is so profound to me and so interesting to me. And when I heard the readings this morning, and kind of reflected on them, it gives, it gives almost a perfect description of my experience of the illumination of conscience and, and what that's like uh, or going to be like for each one of us. Now, with that being said, I believe that the reading is speaking of each one of us uh, coming before God in our personal judgment. But understanding that the elimination of conscience as an event is a precursor to that, or as one of the Garabandal visionaries said, it's like a judgment in miniature. The scriptures have a way of opening things up to us, realities, spiritual realities that we can, we can delve deeper into and understand on a deeper level. As I said, scripture works in depth, and so there are veils. The key to scripture is, is to listen, to open our ears and really listen. This is why any time that I would, you know, make a recommendation for scripture or even when I was teaching Bible studies, um, I always recommended that people, when they read scripture, they read it aloud um, because faith comes through hearing. And this isn't something that came to me. This is something that was passed on to me uh, that I learned from very good, very wise spiritual direction. So anytime that I receive that um, type of direction, I try to pass it on to, uh, you know, people that would attend the Bible study or attend the prayer group that, that, we, that we have. And um, it's a powerful thing because it works. And so taking on that spiritual direction and really heeding the words and the advice of, of that spiritual director at the time really helped me grow. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to read today the uh, second reading from today's readings of the Holy Mass. And um, because again, what it does is it gives a very in-depth description of what the illumination of conscience is like. And when we really listen and kind of dissect the reading, dissect the words in the scriptures, and then really reflect on each word and what that actually means, we come to a deeper understanding of what it is like to stand before Jesus Christ in judgment. So with that being said, I'm going to read this real quick and then kind of dissect it for you. This comes from Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verses 12 and 13. Indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. Now, the first thing that I want to do is point out that the word of God here is a reference to Jesus himself. The word of God is indeed living. This draws back, um, I think, to the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Uh, the word was with God, the word was God, and then the word became flesh. Okay, so the word of God very often, if not always in Scripture, is somehow referring to Jesus. He said, is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit. And that's a powerful thing that this writer would differentiate between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. And this is one of the most profound parts of this reading, is this last part of it, this last part of verse 12, where he says, it is able, the word of God or Jesus, is able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Now it's one thing to have thoughts of the heart. It is a completely different thing to be able to see the reflection of those thoughts. Able to discern or reveal reflections and thoughts of the heart. 
And this is what it's like to stand before Jesus and see your life. And I know that from experience. Again, this is one of the things that made it so shocking for me because I knew the thoughts of my heart. I knew the sins I committed. But to see the reflection of those with my own eyes as he sees them is what made it so shocking because it is, you see it in such clarity. And so I, I guess I would refer it to or, or use a, a reference, you know, to stand in front of a wall with the light behind you and see your shadow on the wall is one thing. You kind of get an idea of, you know, the, the height and the body shape and, you know, the type of, you know, the style of hair, if it's big, if it's little, you know, if they're bald, whatever. You get an idea of the person by looking at a shadow. It is a completely different thing to look into a mirror and see the absolute reflection of that person. Now imagine that on the scale of seeing everything the way God sees it. And this is what the writer is referring to when he says everything is naked and exposed to him. He sees everything just as it is. And so, you know, and I've, I've said this before, we've lost an awareness of what sin is. I think for someone to walk into a confessional, and this is the example I'm gonna use. If someone walks into a confessional and uh, male or female, and they say that I committed adultery, I had sexual relations with another man or another woman um, behind the back of my spouse. I committed adultery. I'm pretty sure the penance for that would be pretty heavy. There would probably be like, you know, well, you need to be honest with your spouse. You need to go through counseling. You know, you need to stay away from this person. The whole type of thing, you know, a lot of counsel would go into that confession. I'm thinking, okay, I can't say for sure, but I'm thinking, uh, for the most part, most priests would give a lot of counsel during that confession. And I'm sure the penance, again, would be, you know, quite heavy. You know, um, you know, a number of rosaries, uh, uh, fasting, penance, uh, making reparation. But if a man or a woman walks into the confessional and says, I looked at a man or a woman in lust, usually what's given is in Our Father or a Hail Mary. But according to Jesus, if you look at a man or a woman in lust, you've already committed adultery in your heart. It's no different. And this is exactly what this is saying, this reading, that everything is naked and exposed to him to whom we must render an account. Now remember, thoughts and reflections of the heart. That was one of the most profound things for me in my experience during the illumination that I received. It was the effect my sin had, not only on others, but the damage it did to my soul. The last part of this reading, no creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. That was the wake-up call for me. I understood when I stood before Jesus and it, the pupils of his eyes were literally flames of fire. They weren't round pupils. They were flames of fire that penetrated right through me. I knew there was absolutely nothing concealed. And I'm not only talking about personal sin where, you know, it happens physically, you know, whether it be um, gossip or slander or uh, some type of impurity. What I'm speaking of is even the thoughts of the heart, holding grudges, unforgiveness, judging others. This is one of the reasons that I was so adamant about speaking bad about the Pope. Because it's when you come before him, when you stand before him, again, as I've said before, 
And I would warn those that do it. They may not like Pope Francis. They may not agree with everything he says, but when they go on and start talking bad about him, all they are going to see when they come before God is that they slandered the Pope. It has nothing, his, he has nothing to do with, with our, our personal relationship with Jesus. Pope Francis is Pope Francis and his relationship with God is his. Our relationship with God is ours. Now, are there some that think he's leading the church astray? Sure. Are there some things that he said that I don't understand? Sure. But I don't judge the man. God is the judge. And when it comes right down to it, you know, I'll touch on this a little bit. We see the way the church is going. Understand that nothing can happen if God doesn't allow it. And that is one of the things that brings peace to us when we see the world going crazy, when we see the church, you know, like almost sinking. God has allowed it for a reason and we have to trust that. It's one of the ways that we make, uh, we go through these types of times, uh, these times that we're living in, in an extraordinary amount of peace because we know the promise at the end. Jesus has conquered the world. And it's only a matter of time before that becomes a reality. When we cower in fear or fall into anxiety, when we begin to say it's that person's fault or this church leader's fault or do nothing but point out the bad people that are, that, well, I don't want to call them bad people, people that are not living according to the gospel that are within the church, even, even people who have been ordained, our focus isn't where it should be. Do we recognize the sin? Yes, but we can't let the sin overcome us to a point to where we start judging others. Their relationship with God is theirs. Their judgment before God is theirs. And if we judge them, or if we slander them, then we will be judged by the exact same measure with which we judge another. So it's so important to guard the thoughts of the heart because the thoughts of, of the heart have a reflection. And, and we see the thoughts of our hearts when we stand before Jesus, who is like a divine mirror in which we see those reflections in divine truth in divine clarity. We see our souls as God sees them. I think uh, one of the visionaries of Garabindal said, we will see our souls as God sees us. This verse in this second reading today from Mass explains this perfectly. Everything is naked. Nothing is concealed. The thoughts of our hearts. It's so important to really focus on that because the thoughts of our heart should be nothing but mercy, forgiveness, love, understanding, and trust in God. As I said, everything that's happening in the world has been allowed. Otherwise, it wouldn't be happening. Everything happens according to the will of God. And we have free will as human beings. Some are going to rebel and go against him. They're making their choice. But again, who are we to judge? There is only one judge. And every single one of us, as this scripture passage says, will stand before him and have to give an account for everything that we did in the flesh. And that includes the thoughts and the reflections of the heart. So I, I hope this kind of gives an idea of what it's like to stand before God and to see ourselves as he sees us. And if I were to put an exclamation point on this, I would, I would refer again back to the diary of Faustina. At the time she received this uh, message from Jesus, the one I'm going to quote, 
She, she, in everybody's eyes, she was a living saint. And she was beating herself up for these little minor flaws that, you know, most of us wish that's all we dealt with, you know. Um, she was a holy, holy woman, complete union with God. And she, Jesus appeared to her crucified at the mass and, and asked her, why do you beat yourself up over these little imperfections? If I were to show you your misery in its fullness, you would die of terror. That's saying a lot. That, that we don't even understand our own brokenness. That we have no comprehension of the depth of that. That he would say something like that to St. Faustina who at the time had reached complete union with God, that if he were to reveal her and her true misery, that she would die of terror. That is the level of separation that happened between man and God because of one sin. It, it, as Jesus said, it is a great chasm and, and the cross becomes the bridge through which we cross back into union with God, where we, where we started from, our first parents started from. The things going on in this world today, God's not unaware. Everything is happening according to his will. We have to trust that. If we fall into fear and anxiety, then we're not doing what Jesus told us to do. He said, when you see these, begin, these things begin to happen, stand erect, stand up and raise your heads because your salvation is at hand. If we cower, we're not doing what he told us to do. If we worry, we're not doing what he told us to do. We should be rejoicing in the times we're living in. God will always provide the grace necessary to go through whatever we have to go through. The example I, get, I would give, I guess, is, is St. Stephen. As they stoned him to death, he cries out. I think Luke was there jotting it down. Behold, I see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of God. In other words, he was in complete ecstasy. He was having a vision of the glorified Christ in heaven seated at the right hand of God and he never felt the stoning. And we see this time and time again with the saints that have been martyred. So I wanted to share this video with you because to me this second reading today was so profound. It, you know, it was right there, right in front of me. And I thought, you know, what a wonderful way to be able to explain what an illumination of conscience actually looks like. I can't say what it feels like. I can only say what it felt like for me. And so it's different for each person because the reflection of each person as revealed in the clarity of divine truth will be their own reflection. And that is unique to every single person on the face of the earth. So I would recommend that we strive to um, pay close attention to the thoughts of our hearts. Because the thoughts themselves have a reflection. And that reflection will be seen in absolute clarity when we stand before the person of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.